Welcome to our lecture online. Now let's take a look at this simple circuit because we're going to use that to show you how to find the transfer function. Let's say we have a current source and want to know what the current output is in the second branch. Notice we have two branches here. Let's call this branch uh, the branch with impedance Z1 and this branch with impedance Z2. We need to remember that the reactance across the inductor is equal to J omega L, the magnitude is omega L, and J, of course, is that it's a 90 degrees uh, phase difference between the voltage across the inductor and the current in the uh, circuit. And in this case, we have the reactance across the capacitor, which is minus J over omega C, minus J because there's again a 90 degree lag between the, the current and the voltage, or I should say between the voltage and the current, and therefore, if you multiply both the top and the bottom by j, j squared is negative 1 times 1 becomes a positive 1. In the denominator, we have j omega c. So typically, we see the reactants across the capacitor as 1 over j omega c. So now, if you want to know what the current in the output is in these branches, the current in that branch is going to be equal to the current of the source times the impedance in the other branch divided by the sum of the impedances in the two branches. So that will be Z1 divided by Z1 plus Z2 times the source current. Now Z1 is going to be the 4 ohms plus the reactance of the two Henry's. So you can see that will be J omega times 2. So therefore we got 4 plus J2 omega as the impedance in the, in the left branch here. Then we add the two impedances together, so that will be 4 plus J2 omega plus the impedance across the capacitor, which will be 1 over J omega C. Since C is 0.5, we have J 0.5 times omega. And then we just algebraically simplify that. We can do that by multi multiplying both the numerator and the denominator by J 0.5 times omega. If we do that, we end up with J omega times this times 0.5, so 0.5 times 4 is 2, 0.5 times 2 is 1. In the denominator, notice that this times this, we simply get 1. This times this, the 2 times 0.5 is 1, and J omega times J omega is J omega squared, and 4 times J times 0.5 omega, 4 times 0.5 is 2 with J and omega. Then if we rearrange the order, we get 1 plus J2 omega plus J omega squared in the denominator. In the numerator, we get J omega times 2 plus J omega. Now, if you watched a few of the previous videos, you then realize that this is the transfer function we've been using to try and find the poles and the zeros. The zeros were found when we found the values for J omega to make the numerator zero, namely J omega equals zero, and J omega equals negative 2 make the numerator zero. That's where the zeros are. And then here we found that when j omega was equal to negative 1, that made the denominator 0, and therefore that's where the poles were. But that's, at least in this way, you can see how a simple circuit like that can then yield a transfer function in this particular fashion. And that is how it's done.